So Locke is going to say that he can give a plausible account of knowledge uh, that does just as good a job as Plato without appealing to any innate ideas. All right, well, let's just take him at his word. Let's see what, how he's going to account for knowledge uh, that, that does the same job that Plato does without uh, appealing to innate ideas. And to do that, we're going to use, we're going to use the allegory of the cave as kind of a, you know the model for, <laughs> for how Locke is going to do this. So Plato uses the allegory to illustrate his account. Uh, we're going to start with the allegory and try to find out how Locke is, is stepping in and uh, uh, giving you know, his, you know, his concepts to fit with the allegory. So just to really briefly sum up, remember the allegory of the cave. In the allegory, we had four main parts. Right? You had the shadows, you had the puppets, you had the solid objects outside, and then you had the sun. For Plato, the shadow represented appearances. The cutouts represented particular objects. The solid objects outside represented forms of those particular objects. And then the sun represented the good, the true, and the beautiful, the form above all forms. Okay, so what from Locke's account corresponds to each of these parts of the allegory? 